In this lesson, we're going to go over the most frequently tested and highest yielding areas of real property on the bar exam. Now, unfortunately for us, to go over the most frequently tested and highest yielding areas of real property, we're going to, have to go over a lot of different subject matter. And this is because there's a lot of variance in what's tested on the bar exam in real property, right? In most subjects, think about torts, right? In torts, we can go into the bar exam with a lot of confidence that the majority of your points and torts is going to come from the negligence analysis and civil procedure, right? We can go into the bar exam fairly confident that the majority of your points are going to come from jurisdiction and venue, evidence, right? We know that the majority of your points likely are going to come from hearsay and relevance, right? In most subjects, we can really pin down certain topics that we know are going to truly be more frequently tested and higher yielding. Unfortunately, in real property, right, all of the subjects that are kind of tested are tested at equal rates. We can't really pin down one topic and definitively say, this is tested more frequently, this is higher yielding. It just doesn't work like that in real property. So this means we're going to have to take a different approach. You really have to be confident with everything you see up here on the board, right? We need to understand ownership of real property, which is present estates and future interests, co-tenancy. We need to have a good understanding of landlord-tenant law, right? Rights in land, real covenants, equitable servitudes and easements, the real estate contract, you know, the merger doctrine of the real estate contract into the deed, marketable title, right? Mortgages, titles, which is going to include transfer of title by deed. What do we do when there's competing claims to title? And ultimately we have to be comfortable with acquiring title by adverse possession, right? There's so many topics in real property that we need to be comfortable with going into the exam. There's no way I can really break it all down in a 60 to 90 minute video, right? So for this subject, we're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to have to record kind of several different videos for each one of these topics, and we're going to have to stitch it together. Now, having said that, I am going to try to move as efficiently as possible through each of these topics, and I'm going to focus on the areas within these topics that we can really expect to see the most on the bar exam, right? If that makes sense. But with that guys, ultimately, we're just going to have to kind of break this up. And what I will do is below the video, I'll make sure it's all time stamped because this video is going to be longer than most of the other videos in this series. So if you want to fast forward to a certain part, like maybe you just want to know about real covenants and equitable servitudes, right? Below the video, it'll all be time stamped. So if you want to skip around, right, you can skip around and kind of prioritize whatever you want to watch first, right? So we'll make sure that we do that below. This is not a video you have to watch from beginning to end like some of our other videos in this series are structured. And again, that's just because real property kind of just requires a different approach. So hopefully that all makes sense. But with that, we can really start to jump into it, right? We can start with ownership of property. And in this lesson, though, we're really going to focus on co-tenancy, which deals with co-ownership of property. So ownership of property, the main idea we're thinking about here is present estates and future interests. And this is a topic that I can't summarize, right? Present estates and future interests, you really have to understand how the decision tree works, right? And how you use this decision tree to categorize interests in real property correctly, right? This is fee simple, life estate, contingent remainders, right? All of that stuff between present estates and future interests and how you categorize interests and ownership of real property correctly, right? We do have a lot of video content on that breaks this down in full detail. So we're gonna put a link below the video so you can see how to do that, how to use the decision tree to categorize property interests correctly, right? So you should watch that video and be comfortable with doing that before you enter the bar exam. But that's not something I'm gonna try to summarize here because we have covered that in so much detail. Just make sure you watch that video, you do some practice problems and you're comfortable with that. What we really can jump into here though is co-tenancy, right? Or co-ownership of property. What happens on the bar exam when we see a grantor or a transferor of real property convey a piece of property, real property, to two or more people at the same time, right? Concurrently. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as concurrent ownership of real property, right? 
And so you might see something like O to A and B, right? Which we'll see at default is what we call a tenancy in common, right? And the tenancy in common is the default estate created by a conveyance of real property to two or more people. So if we see something like this, right, Oliver conveys Green Acre to Amy and Bobby, we know that's a tenancy in common, right? Opposed to this, we have this idea of the joint tenancy, right? And we'll see that the main issue we're dealing with in concurrent ownership of property is distinguishing between the tenancy in common and the joint tenancy. And the reason that this distinction is going to be very important is because it determines where that property interest goes when the tenant dies, right? When that co-tenant dies, where does the property go? And we'll see there's really two options, right? So take this example I have drawn up here on the board, right? O to A and B, right? Well, let's say that, so at this point, let's say that the transferor, Oliver, O conveys Greenacre to Amy and Bobby, right? So let's say that Amy and Bobby both have a one half interest in Greenacre, right? Amy has a one half interest in Greenacre and Bobby has a one half interest in Greenacre. And let's say that's both in fee simple, right? Amy has a 50% share of ownership in fee simple. Bobby has a 50% share of ownership in Greenacre and fee simple, right? Well, the question for us typically on the bar exam that we have to deal with is what happens when either of these parties die, right? What happens when Amy dies? Where does her property interest go? Where does her one half interest in Greenacre go, right? This is the big question on the bar exam. And we'll see that it depends on whether the relationship between A and B is a tenancy in common or a joint tenancy. If it's a tenancy in common, right, then Amy's one half interest in Greenacre is going to pass to whoever she wants it to pass to when she dies, right? So that could either be by a will, right? She could draft a will and in her will leave that 50% interest to her son, right? Or if she dies without a will, it's going to pass by intestate succession, right? But the key is with tenants in common, each tenant in common has the right to transfer their interest in the property freely at death. So Amy gets to decide. So she can, if it's a tenancy in common, right, as indicated by this kind of color coding of blue and red, if it's a tenancy in common, Amy can leave her property to whoever she wishes at death right, either by will or intestate succession if she dies without a will. Right, now, on the other hand, if it's a joint tenancy, then Amy does not get to decide where her property interest goes at death, right? Even if Amy has a will, right, and she tries to leave that property interest to her son, doesn't matter. If they're joint tenants, when she dies, her 50% interest in Greenacre is going to go to Bobby automatically. Right? So it doesn't matter if she has a will and she's trying to leave that property to her son. If they're joint tenants, when Amy dies, automatically Bobby is going to receive her share of interest in the property. Right? We call this a right of survivorship. This is the key distinction. Right? Bobby, as a joint tenant, would hold a right of survivorship, which means he gets Amy's property interest when she dies. Right? So, that's why the, pretty much what the whole analysis is, right? And why we're trying to classify the co-tenancy as either a tenancy in common or a joint tenancy, because it tells us where the property goes when the co-tenants die, right? Again, in short, tenancy in common, it goes wherever the co-tenant wants it to go at death. They can freely transfer the property at death. So it's either going to be by will or intestate succession, right? If they're joint tenants, then it's going to go to the other joint tenants, right? Even if they have a will, doesn't matter. Joint tenants hold a right of survivorship. Okay, 
So how do we distinguish though between the tenancy in common and the joint tenancy? Well, the tenancy in common is the default estate, right? So this is our starting. Thank you so much for watching this video preview of our Bar Blitz video series. If you would like to see the conclusion of this video and gain full access to our entire Bar Blitz video library, which includes coverage of the most frequently tested and highest yielding areas of law in each bar exam subject, we invite you to head over to our website and join the thousands of law students who have already enrolled in Studicata Bar Review. To get started with your no risk free trial today, simply click the link in the description box below or visit www.studicata.com.